Hey there everybody, it is Saturday, August 6th, and it is time for my sketchbook review. So, I got a few goodies this week. Um, me and Andy Marone, we uh, did our art trade, and I got her half of the package actually, oh, it was on my last day off, I think. No, I think it might have been last Sunday. No, it had to have been last Saturday after I'd already done my sketchbook review. Um, I got that in the mail, and uh, she sent me a couple things, and I'm going to brag and show off. So, she sent me an aqua brush. So, yes, you see yes, aqua brush. Um, she sent me this Pentel uh, art brush. It's sky blue. It's actually a really, really pretty color, um, and I'm excited to use it. I just need to figure out what I'm going to use it for. And she sent me this um, Winx. I think it's a Winx. It's a Kiritake something or another. I can't remember it. And I threw the package out. But um, this has got like this clear gel, like sparkle gel in it. And it's really, really, really pretty. And I'm really excited to use this. So I'm trying to find something to use both of them in. But uh, I'm trying to keep myself from just using it on everything that I have. She also sent me some stickers, some Disney stickers, which is super cute. I don't think I'm going to use them. I think I'm just going to collect them. Ho, 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 ho. I got Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde and Simba and Aurora and Piglet. So they're really, really cute. I was surprised to get them. I was like, oh. When I get cute things, I get excited. So I got a stack of those, and then she also sent me a print of her Princess Leia that she did. And I really, really like it. It's like very, very soft and lined to brown, and it's just amazing. Look at that, those fine lines. This is really pretty. I like this picture. And again, I'm still looking for uh, something to hold my larger prints, and I only have 4x6 print holder. That's bigger than a 4x6, I'm pretty sure. And then she did this cute little... Uh, she said it was done with um, Crayola marker. This cute little picture that she did. And it's super cute. And I like it. Oh, and rounded corners. I like rounding my corners too, but my commissioners never seem to like it, so I never get to do it. And then she sent me the full-size picture uh, of our art trade. So I'm fixing to send her another, her a package too. It's going to be, I'm going to send her the original that I did for her as well. And I'm just, uh... Waiting on the post office to open, and then I'm going to go try and do that today. So there's that. And then I did some. I just wanted to show off the stuff that I got. I was like, yay, mail! Uh, I feel like there was something else, but I can't quite remember what it was. Huh. Oh well, it'll come to me at some point, I'm sure. And then I'll correct myself. Oh, I'm very tired too, because it was a long week. Uh, um... But yes, okay, so I wanted to show that off and just kind of give you guys an idea that that's like the sort of thing I was looking at for like um, the uh, art trade mailing list thingy my bobber. Like you get paired up with someone every week, every month or every other month or every three months or whatever. And you guys just kind of trade uh, goodies. It's just something I was thinking about. It's not something I've got working or anything like that. It would be a lot of work to put that together to find people who I could actually rely on to participate in it but uh that was just kind of my ideas like you know you do art trades back and forth and actually trade the originals back and forth and maybe do a video or whatever and then um throw in a few extras if you can afford it obviously oh again I apologize <sighs> I'm very tired um obviously throwing in extras is, would be something only if you could afford it but it would still be something nice. Anyway, so let's talk about my week. Um, can't say a whole lot about work, just that it was up and down, like very up and down. I'm like, oh my god. Um, so that had me going pretty much all week. Uh, but I am getting it, and I guess they're still happy with me. So um, my training is going to continue, and my uh, my representative person is supposed to come see me next week 
and see how I'm doing one more time and then I'm gonna get moved to second shift to start training there and then I'm gonna do a stint on third shift and then I start if I feel comfortable coming off my preceptor and actually working working um, they've already increased my hours I was supposed to be a 24 hour per two week position now I am a 40 hour per week per two week 40 hours per two week position and there's been talk down the pipeline of making me full-time because I'm the only one who actually showed up for my interview and things like that so I'm hoping that that goes well um, and I'm hoping that that comes about because I do ultimately want to work full-time um, but I want to be able to like pick my kind of full-time I don't want like I'd be cool with 80 hours per two weeks which would be 40 hours a week but I would prefer 32 hours per week which would give me 64 hours per two weeks just because um, those extra days because of the kind of work I'm doing would be beneficial um, and I could pick up where I needed to but we'll see what has what happens um, there uh, I'm getting conflicting reports that some people say yes they want to make you full-time and other people are saying no they don't want to make you full-time because then they have to pay benefits and they don't want to pay benefits um, so I'm like okay whatever it is what it is um, I've got a couple things in the works I've got my creative art box my last video in the works I just need to um, transfer something over and find time to film and that's been the biggest hang up is I come home and I basically fall asleep um, so I'm working on that this weekend I have today and tomorrow off uh, and I also have um, oh there was something oh I went ahead and I ordered um, art snacks the October the Inktober box so that's gonna be coming at the beginning of next month so I'm planning a video for that as a subscription box and I still haven't decided what subscription box if any I'm going to um, go for for the next few months I have the money to do it now I was thinking art snacks but again like I said a lot of people do art snacks already I don't want to just keep doing the same thing that everyone else is doing um, I would like to do something different um, we'll wait and see and and yeah we'll wait and see what happens um, it's hard to say because I want to do it but I don't want to like I don't want I mean I guess it shouldn't matter if other people are doing it or anything like that if I enjoy it I should do it and I do enjoy it it's just um I don't know like our snacks I feel like they're big I'd rather promote a smaller company um, as far as creative art box goes I don't think I'm going to be resubscribe resubmitting or resubscribing to them just because um for me I look for deals and when I add up the uh, cost of the materials inside the box it doesn't match what I what I am paying per month and I mean I'm adding up the past two months I've been upgraded in my boxes for doing my videos but when I add it up um, even with the upgrade it's not even coming close to what I've I'm paying per month and to be fair and you know I say it in my videos too they are not a deal subscription box they are just a subscription box so they don't have to get you know they don't have to meet a goal or make a deal or anything like that they just have to deliver art supplies to you uh, certain times a month anyway so again if you guys have any idea like what kind of subscription box might be new or doesn't get a lot of attention that needs more attention then go ahead and you know let me know in the comments below and I'll hop on that so Let's go ahead and get into Le Art. Uh, again, I did do a little bit of a live stream last week on Saturday and um, I did quite a bit of uh, artwork then, but I think I was also doing a live stream earlier in the week um, and I did, I'm saying um a lot, I'm noticing that. I did an art stream earlier in the week and I did digital work then, but I didn't even finish it. I was just too tired. so. I plan on doing a live stream either tonight or tomorrow. I haven't decided completely because, um, again, there's none. There's stuff I've got to do. I need a haircut. I need to go run some errands. Um, Aaron's going to a bee festival today, which was why I was considering doing it today and holding off my haircut until tomorrow. But I don't think that very many haircut places are open on Sundays. So I need to go pull money. I also need to work out. I need to start getting into doing that again. I think that's why I've been feeling like icky. And I need to do art, art. So, yeah. Anyway, 
and I need to record that other video. And I'd like to get that done before I get anything else done. But this was my priority because I wanted to have this done last night. And Aaron called me. He had relatives in town. They all wanted to go out to eat. And I really, really, really didn't want to go. I just was too tired. And my whole plan was to come home, put on pajamas, film my sketchbook review, and basically just, you know, slum around the house. But I ended up going out to eat instead, and we didn't get home until almost 8 o'clock. And then I sat down to answer a couple messages, and I, like, fell asleep. <laughs> I was out. He woke me up at 10 to say he was going to bed, and I was like, oh, that sounds like a plan. I didn't even realize it was 10 until I looked at the clock, and I was like, crap. Because I was, like, in the middle of, like, role-playing with some people, too, and I had to go apologize to them for falling off the face of the earth, but... It happens. I work a lot. Anyway, so let's get into this. There's not a whole lot, like I said. So we left off last week with um, cuddly Piper and Jean here. Little baby bunnies. So we've seen this. Um, so this was from the live stream. I was drawing a picture of drunk Seamus. Look at that grace. Look at that character. Um, and me and Kay were talking about it and we've pretty much determined that Seamus and Jean will not be getting along just because Seamus is very loud, drunk, um, unafraid, very bold guy. I used the word bold wrong, but whatever. Um, and he doesn't, and Seamus doesn't like Jean because Jean's like, you know, basically the golden boy, you know, he's the century he gets all the girls attention um he's well off because he works for uh he works for philip so yeah and piper likes him and he and seamus likes piper so but piper kind of likes seamus too it just depends on how things go down the way i write them but so i drew this like little encounter where he's all drunk and trash talking gene and gene's like right there so gene's gonna go wail on him they fight all the time it gets to a point, like, initially I think Piper would try to stop it, but then she just gets to a point and she's like, just don't kill each other, please. Because if they're going to fight, they're going to fight. Um, and then we were talking about the breakup of the town, the town that Piper ends up going to, um, where she meets Philip and Jean and everything like that. It's a very small, like, a little, um, not a town town, like, with churches and things like that, but it's just like a little outpost. And it's very basic. It has a, a mill, a bank... Um, a trading post and um, the prostitution home. So basically it's a mill town without a church and stuff like that. It's, it's a beginning mill town. So the mill, it's run by humans and um, the rats are in control of the critter aspect of it. The rats are in control of all the critter aspects of this town. So you have a rat family who is in control of the mill, which is the Brambleberries. There's going to be another rat family in charge of the prostitution home, another rat family in charge of the bank, and another rat family in charge of trade goods. And among these rat families, they pretty much, I say employ, but it's almost more like enslavement. Um, they take mice in to work for them. So obviously they're not going to get their hands dirty. They're going to make other people do it. The mill is actually one of the better places. It's a more dangerous place to work besides maybe the prostitution home. But um, the mill is one of the more dangerous places to work, but it's also one of the kindest. The Brambleberries are actually very good to their employees. Um, they pay them fair wage. They give them good places to sleep, provide food and shelter and things like that for them. Uh, and they provide, you know guards and things like that prostitution homes a little bit different it's run by a female rat i've got a doodle of her later on um their idea is if you're wandering around you're looking for work and they employ gene not gene um adam and sam to come in and kidnap basically from the other families uh wandering female mice and pull them into the prostitution thing and basically the way it was worded is keep them fed and keep them tired and you can keep them working sort of thing. So it's not necessarily, it's it's not a good place to work, obviously. Um, the madame who runs it, because she's a mouse, uh, runs the actual, is in charge of the actual girls. It's like a very hierarchy. Like, again, the rats don't want to get their hands dirty. So the female rat in charge of the prostitution side of things, she doesn't actually do anything with the girls. She hands it off to a madame who you know, keeps the girls in line and she's not a very good person. So, but, um, her and Cherry actually get along pretty well. They're very similar in character. 
So she lets Cherry come in, even though Cherry works for the mill, she lets Cherry come into the prostitution side a lot to make extra money. And the girls are allowed to keep a bit of the money that they make. Um, so their income is based on how much work they do. And obviously, if that's how it works, then you're going to want to do more work or to be favored or whatever. So it just depends on the kind of person it is. Um, you could do very well in the prostitution side or very poorly in the prostitution side. So, yeah, but they actually make a lot of their money because when there's big rat parties, all the guys are, the rat males are always coming to the prostitutes to find somebody to accompany them because if you don't have somebody on your shoulder then you're kind of a loser um but in the brambleberries case they usually take somebody from the mill and i know that for a while i have it set up to where philip was taking cherry because she's he's trained her and everything like that um but once he meets piper she's better trained she's got manners and things like that he starts taking her instead and that's where a lot of the um anger between cherry cherry and piper mostly cherry to piper comes in trade goods i haven't really figured out yet they're not going to be bad to work for either though but theirs is more they don't get paid they get goods like food and things like that in return and then the bankers of course the mice aren't going to get any money from the bankers at all but what they will have is basically supplies they will be taken care of and it's actually lucrative work it's not hard labor or anything like that it's educated work so that's there's trade-offs for everything um another drunk shame is here because that's how he be and then this is him trying to get a uh, piper to drink and she does but she kind of like it's kind of like um if you've ever seen a dog drink beer before um and they've never done it or a hard liquor they kind of snuff and they shake their head a lot that's basically her reaction and then she never touches it again she doesn't like alcohol but everybody has to try um, here I was just kind of doing a size comparison because I was getting confused on who's tall, who's short. Philip is tallest because he is a rat, but he's actually kind of short for a rat. Um, I think our female, our one female rat is actually taller than him. Jean's a uh, little bit shorter than Philip, but taller than your average mouse. Seamus is average male mouse size, and then Piper is small. She's kind of short for a female mouse. Um, we're, Seamus' size is more typical. Maybe just a hair shorter, like up to here, would be typical for a female mouse. But Piper's a little bit smaller. She was malnourished growing up, so that's why. And then I drew a picture of her eating hair because I don't. I probably was hungry, and when I'm hungry, I draw my characters eating. Um, and then this is a picture of Seamus pulling um, Piper into dancing, whether she wants it or not. Um, but he's teaching her, and she's learning, so it's fun. Because, like it or not, Seamus, uh, he's a very fun guy. He's very outgoing, and he wants everybody else to have fun and to be outgoing with him, especially if they're female. So, he just kind of snatches them up and says, let's dance. And if, if they don't know how, he takes the time to show them, and then they can have fun together. And that's his whole thing. Plus, he likes her, so whatever. This is the madame I was talking about earlier. Um, she's going to be blonde. I'm actually going to use her, I think, in my creative art box thing. I'm going to take this particular picture and marker it. Um, I haven't come up with a name for her yet, so that's something that's coming down the pipeline still. But again, you could just tell by her expression that she and Cherry would get along. Whereas Cherry is all like evil grins and everything. She's just like resting bitch face all the time. So she's in the works. I got a couple shots of her here. I like I like this particular detail of she has a scar on her nose and that the way the scar healed it made her nose into a little heart. It's kind of morbid but at the same time I'm like that's kind of cute too. This is our female rat who's going to be in charge of the prostitution home. She's actually highly conservative. She's like very like keeping herself covered up and everything like that. So yeah that's interesting. She's going to be an interesting dynamic. I can't, I need to build her up a little bit more though. I'll do a few more pictures. Um, we were listening in my live stream to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And we were talking about Hagrid. So I drew a little bean Hagrid, Hagrid here. <laughs> Excuse me. And I thought it was cute. And then I drew a picture of Duck Piper. She, in role play right now, she's, she got um, sort of kidnapped, dragged somewhere. And she was blindfolded. So this is her getting the blindfold taken off. It's a, actually a pretty bad picture. The anatomy on it isn't very good. 
This is Cherry doing what the Cherry do and booping Cherry or er, uh, Jean's nose. She's a nose booper. She likes to go boop because it's annoying. And then this is uh, Adam and Piper. And then this was, all right, this was a request from live stream to draw a dog character. So I did a little like French poodle person. And then I was drawing sleeping Piper because I was getting tired. And then a couple days later, I sat down and started drawing again and I just grabbed the nearest pencil, which is why there was a color change. Um, in current Cloverdale uh, role play, Piper and Jean are babysitting a set of triplets. Well, she's doing her little reading hour for the kids and um one of the new moms has dropped off their triplets for piper piper normally just takes care of them on her own but gene came along this time uh because he could i guess and well because he wanted to to um help out and hang out with the kids mostly so he's got a couple he's got the ear biter um and they're actually having very pleasant conversation, but it's about to be interrupted by the children's. So she's got work to do. So their conversation will have to wait. It's actually a really cute conversation. I'm very, very happy about it. I'm like, oh, they're asking these questions. But it's about to come to an end. Um, Pouty, Rabbit Piper. Um, it was gonna be, Jean's head ended up way too big, but it was gonna be Bunny Jean and um, Agatha and Piper just happens to be over there pouting. So yeah, the picture works out. And then I was working on more duck pictures of Piper, but I was actually struggling with the anatomy of her face again because it's been so long since I've drawn duck characters. Um, so I just kind of did this. And then I got a picture here. I was thinking about Jean scolding Piper for coming out into the periphery of their little territory to visit him because she does that because if she waits for him to come in from his rounds and things like that she doesn't get a chance to talk to him because all the girls are like rushing up to see him so what she does is she sneaks out on her breaks and her lunches and stuff to go find him spend lunch and stuff because she's grateful to him he did like save her from something um but he gets mad about it because she's obviously endangering herself. And that actually comes into play much, much later on in the story. But we're not there yet, so shh. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And then I was just going to draw another picture of them talking. But I didn't get around to it. I fell asleep that night. And then that's it for the doodles. Oh, I need to start setting more. <laughs> I need to start setting more time aside to draw and do stuff. Um, most of it's been getting done. Like as soon as I finish my sketchbook reviews, I usually do a live stream or something like that. And that's where I'm getting a lot of my doodles in is on that free time, during that free time. Um, whatever day, I mean, there's some weekends I'm not going to get any time off and I have to just learn to accept that. But um, what's going to end up happening, I think, is I'm just going to start doodling whenever I can. It might mean lighter sketchbook reviews, but it is what it is. You know, I gotta work. I gotta make that moolah. But um, if they let me start picking my hours or if they do, I mean, right now I'm not full time. Right now, the most I'm working is three days a week or four days all together. Eight times five is 45. So eight times four is 40. Um, not 40, but um, 30. Oh my God, mathing six and six. I can't math. Anyway, point being, uh, is that right now as my schedule falls, I don't, unless I pick up time, I don't have any, uh, extra hours or anything like that. So it's right now, my schedule is basically up to me to determine, um, well, not right now. I'm full time until I'm done with my precept shirt. And then once I'm done with that, cause they got another full time girl coming in the precept at the same time uh, she'll be going full-time but then she'll be casual casual so she'll be picking up here and there um so i'm looking at things slowing down probably about mid-september i'm still trying to save up money because you know bills um so i might end up picking up a couple extra shifts throughout the week but that's still what i mean even if i picked up um just one extra day a week then that will put me or one extra shift a week besides what i'm already getting this is so confusing i know besides what i am already getting and how we are then um it would actually put me at full-time hours they just wouldn't 
pay me for being an actual full-time employee. But it is what it is. Anyway, so that's it for this week. If you guys liked what you saw, feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. Um, sorry it was kind of bleh this week. It was a lot of like um, trying to develop some characters up, trying to b do some world building, but at the same time be entertaining in my live stream. And like I said, I did work on some digital art as well. Um, I don't have enough yet for me to really do a digital sketchbook review, but I think that's going to be the next aim, or is going to be the aim for next week, is an updated uh, digital sketchbook review so you guys can kind of see some colored stuff and things like that. But alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.